Hello everybody, welcome to Orion Today. I'm Rowan Dantzler, uh, and t today we have our guest on the show, Austin Marks. He's here with um, some of his Nintendo systems that he has collected over the years. So, um, uh, what are you going to start with? What do you have to show well, us? Well, uh, I'm going to do some facts for each one. All right. So, uh, here is the Nintendo 64. It was released in 1996. The reason why the console was called the 664 was because it because it did 64-bit graphics. That's it used cool. car used cartridges cartridges, but th Nintendo's competitors were using CDs, which were a lot better. So they didn't sell as well as well as they probably would have if they had CDs. Can I can I see it? Can I uh, hold it? The release, the release games for the console were Super Mario 64 and Pilot Wings 64. Because it has 64. There's a, there's yeah. also yeah, a large trend with the games having 64 in their name. The controller had a three-pronged design, but the, in the most common way to hold it would be with the middle and left prong like this. It has a lot of uh, normal buttons for controllers, but uh, the interesting thing is the camera control, the these cam the camera controls because the, the controller was built around Super Mario 64. So, <coughs> so that like entire controller was made for one game, Nintendo 64. No, it wasn't re or, no, really. No, Super Mario made 64. It it wasn't really made a hundred percent, but it was. That was like its main release that kind of helped it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a large uh, controversy about the control controller. So next is the GameCube. It was released in 2001. The console shape is well a cube, and uh, it had a handle on the back for basically no reason. Who's gonna walk around with a Nintendo console in their hand? Just kind of like. W the console sold around 22 million units, which, which was the worst selling console of that console generation. I'm going to be honest, the that second, seems like a lot. The second place was 33 million, and the PS2 was something in like a 150 to 170 million. I forgot. Wow, seems like a lot of pe people were buying the PS2. The console used these small, these really tiny discs. The reason why was because was to prevent piracy, but it didn't really help, and all and it also j made it so they c couldn't store as much data. It had twelve games on its release. So, what what's the controller like for that one? Is it as controversial as uh, the Nintendo 64? Nope, it isn't. The controller is uh, relatively normal. Could I, all, could I could I just look at it? All things okay. considered. Hmm. Yeah, it does look like a pretty except for these controller like buttons. They look kind of the re wonky. the reason why it was like this was because the. The layout of it was to basically have all the buttons circling around A because A is kind of the most used one. For example, with platformers, it would typically be jump. So that, that, make, that does make sense. And with the two joysticks, one of them was fine, but they also just, for, for some reason, made it small. For just what, what does that one do? Uh. Kind of like with modern day controllers, like if you were to play like a first person game, like you use this control, it all depends on what the game is. But so, um, can I see it again? So this, uh, this yellow can, this yellow controller is, would be used joystick. for like the camera. Is that why the, there's like the a joystick? C? Is that yeah. why there's like a C on it? Yeah. And then this, typically. this one is just a regular, and this is for the. Ca oh, that does make sense. All right. And uh, lastly. Is the is the DS? Uh, uh, this is the DS. Uh, I used. It had four different redesigns, and this was the second one. 
The sales of the console were 154 million units, making it the second most sold console of all time. Those four redesigns really did help. I would imagine. It was released in 2004, but really didn't start selling well until 2006. The, the console used cartridges, mostly because uh, it couldn't really... The, it kind of isn't really big enough for any good type of big type of CD. You can't fit a disc in there. That's, that's not going to be possible. It, the, the first two models had Game Boy Advance backwards compatibility, which backwards compatibility is where a console can play ga video games from an older console without having to use like any adapters or stuff. Were there any times that Nintendo consoles like didn't have any of that? Actually, quite a few. The Switch, uh, the, the 64, the NES. That sounds pretty a lot nice. of, but with the handhelds, it mostly was just backwards compatibility. But some okay. co companies use this slot to make accessories for their game. Like there, with the Guitar Hero one, there's this little thing add-on so you could go and like. Pl play something somewhat resembling a guitar. So, um, I see that this is something that you had along with the 3DS that was near it. Um, what game is this? I have I think I've seen it before. It's called Brain Age. Uh, I'm gonna, g well, that's because, uh, I, uh, with the second screen, the second screen of it was, was used for... Oh, there's two screens on it. The second screen was a touch... The bottom screen was a touch screen. It had a stylus for it. And uh, you could... the And this game was a, was an interesting use for it. This game was an interesting use for it because you would, like, draw numbers hmm. and, and stuff with it. Can I see that? So you would, like... So there's a stylus that has, like, a little holder in here, and they... Which w wait? Which camera would the which camera would the uh, the actual game itself be on? Uh, it would be on this one. And then this one is the touch screen, this bottom one. Yeah, All it's right. just an interesting use that. I, that is really interesting. And again, Nintendo does do a lot of interesting stuff. The the buttons for it are mostly just are mostly relatively normal considering the other consoles. Wow. So you have quite the collection of uh, Nintendo consoles. That is pretty impressive. Um, thank you for coming on to the show. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for showing all of these amazing Nintendo consoles. I learned a lot about it. Um, make sure to not leave. Don't, don't leave the seat. You gotta keep watching. We got more interviews. We got more things happening in, the, in our show. You gotta keep watching, guys. OAN TV invites you to take part in our 10-week video production class. The class meets on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offers instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. Upon completion of the class, you get access to OAN TV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. The cost is $30 for Lake Orion residents, $60 for non-residents. For more information, give OAN TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back everyone. This is Orion on TV and I am your host Valerie B here today with Christina the Glam Tech. Mm -hmm. We are going to be talking about her making waves with her a glam sculpture, her wave sculpture. So, welcome to the show, Christina. Hi, Valerie. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me. You're welcome. Hey, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so, you gonna let me demo a little bit here today? Yeah, we wanted to know uh, what this amazing sculpture is all about here. Can you get it, give us some information about this? Yeah, so I started, I'm a hairstylist and um, started creating art pieces using hair, realizing that, you know, hair is just a fiber, like any other textile that we create things with. And so I wanted to push that envelope and 
um, just get like a plain canvas that you can get anywhere from you know Joann's or um, uh, Michael's anything like that and we're just gonna add some hair to it okay with our handy glue gun that's okay that's perfectly <laughs> fine so what made you get started with um, creating hair sculptures on canvases that's pretty amazing um, I just wanted it to be able to showcase it on the wall, um, in a, in, in a homes or in a museum like setting. Okay. And, um, instead of it all, you only typically see here art on the head, on the head. So, um, we're just going to push that envelope a little. So I brought a little piece of hair just to kind of demo how the process is. And then you can use your imagination a little and see the how the finished project came about. Okay. So you just have a typical hair weft. This is um, synthetic hair. And it comes in a larger pack, but this is, you know, just a little piece so you can get an idea. And then we'll just lay it across the canvas. So typically, how long does something like this take to complete? Couple hours, couple hours. Probably depending on the size. Depending on the size of it, I've done some that are um, four feet big, four feet wide. It's probably the largest canvas. Okay. And that one took about a week or so to do to complete. This one, this size, probably like maybe a couple hours, like two hours. Wow. And you just kind of lay it on there. So what's your process when creating? Do you listen to music? Do you sing? <laughs> yes, all of that. <laughs> yeah, typically it is. Um, I love documentaries. Really? And so I watch documentaries on Netflix. Um, maybe have a sip of wine or two, you know. <laughs> Just get into my zone. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. It's therapeutic. It really is. Wow. So what advice would you give um, to someone else that is an artist um, trying to create art out of hair? Or, yeah, art out of hair. Yeah. Um, just have no limits and no boundaries and be as creative as you, as you, as whatever your mind can think. You can create. <laughs> so during the pandemic, I seen that you created some, some purses and jewelry out of here. I did. We got really creative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we couldn't do hair on, um, you know, humans anymore. Uh, we all were just, you know, scared to die. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but so I created, I'm not sure how I came about, the idea came about, but I made a purse, purses and earrings, and I posted it, and, and people liked them and purchased them. Wow. So I kept creating earrings. And purses and wearable art, as they would call it. That's so, amazing. So, where do you see yourself going um, in the future with your hair art? I I, I heard through the grapevine mm -hmm. that you were getting ready to move to California. I am. I am. That is the plan. So, where do you see yourself going with your hair art? Um, just getting more exposure to it and. Um, Hopefully, you know, when you're in the airport or at the doctor's, you know, hospital or whatever, you'll see my hair art displayed there. Yeah. So, this is kind of how it looks just on the canvas straight. The hair is on there. And you can, I can roll it or curl it or 
you know, and I use a spray to kind of, you know, mold it, mold however I want it. That's amazing. And hold it there. You can make any other designs you would like. <laughs> so we seen that you also made hair art out of dresses. Well, you made a dress that was in the. What was what was it for? I know it was um, for Christmas, but it was in the window downtown Detroit. Right. So they have a, I guess a contest. Bedrock um, funds through Design Core Detroit, where they um, allow. I guess under uh, I don't know, but it brings <laughs> awareness to here to artists and their art crab that you know may not have the opportunity to be on Woodward, okay. you know, a busy street during a busy time, the holiday season. So it's you know winter activation where uh, abandoned. Not all of them are abandoned, but some of the buildings are empty. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way of uh, filling that void and also amplifying um, Detroit artists. Mm -hmm. And so I get to win a window <laughs> display. Nice. So, um, oh. <laughs> so I was there for, uh, it was up there from November to January. Okay. So I was grateful for that opportunity. Wow. Well, um, one last thing. You had your mm -hmm. hair um, in the museum. So, how long did your did your was your hair in the museum um, when you had that feature for Gucci? What well, Gucci? Oh. <laughs> so the make ways that was also um, through Design Chorus. They're designing the city competition, mm -hmm. and I won. And um, the Gucci Change Makers Impact Fund funded it, and it was up through the whole month of September, which is Design Month. Okay. Well, I just thank you. It was a pleasure having you on the show, finding out more information about how you make waves and others can make waves in the near future. So we want to thank you for joining us on Orion TV today, and we'll be back here next Tuesday at 5 p.m. All right. <laughs> <laughs>